to the edge. It was a very successful first tournament at the Resch for the local girls basketball teams and for girls basketball as a whole. Great attendance, fun games. Three state champions from my area and the boys brought one back from Madison as well. Justin Felder and Doug Ritchie now join us to take a look back at some of the top performers from this year in high school game time. Over here with Fox 11 Prep Expert Doug Ritchie. Doug, basketball season is over, and this was really one of the more talent-rich seasons you're going to see in Northeast Wisconsin probably for a while. Yeah, I think so, and that's the reason why this year with our all-area teams, you know, normally we go five kids. Seriously, we <laughs> went six on each team because there just was no way to, to knock one kid out. It, there was no way you could justify it. We saw a lot of good kids that are going to be playing at the next level. You know, I was looking at the all-area teams. I, was one, I wanted to make sure you knew. Most basketball teams just five. Well, that, they're so good, we had to go with six. <laughs> all right. Who are you going to knock out here? So let's start on the, uh, the all boys, the large division schools. We have large division and small division. Got Cody Wickman from Pulaski, Cody Schwartz from West De Pere, Adam Byer from Notre Dame, Aaron Mace from Southwest, Dakota Oski from Seymour, Bennett Cook from Ashwaubenon, Doug Alotta, like you said, college players on this list. Yeah, they're all going to play college someday, obviously. Dakota and Cody got, Schwartz got to wait a little bit longer, but so much talent here and I've never seen it like this in Northeast Wisconsin where we've had it and you know these six kids boy they all deserve this. A lot of really tall guys. <laughs> yes there are. <laughs> Let's go to the, uh, the small division schools now you got Turner Botts and Kenneth Lowe the two guys going to Green Bay from Little Shoot. Eric Kittle from Brilliant Travis Voigt from New Lutheran. Cole Van Schindel from Wright Sound and Toby Hegner heading to Creighton from Berlin a real good player big guy. Yeah this team dunked a lot especially that number <laughs> two guy Kenneth Lowe I was looking through highlights of the year Man, he hurt a lot of rims. Well, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about Kenneth Lowe. This is a guy, really, he, his game rounded out this year. Is that fair to say? Yeah, he, he got better in the post. He didn't take as many threes, which Mickey Martin didn't want him to. When you're 6'8 and can flush it, you want to be down low, and that's what he did very well this year. We got a nice little montage of his best dunks. Very, very talented guy signed to play for Green Bay. Dakota Oski as well, uh, a, a talented guy for Seymour. All right, let's go over to the girls now. We'll start with the large team on the girls' side. We got Morgan Anderson, Kayla Dawson from De Pere, Ali LeClaire from Notre Dame, Frankie Wartz from Kimberly, Kelsey Nooker from Bayport, Brenna Heisey from New London, part of a talented New London group. Lots of talent on this team. Uh, these kids all go up and down, really good athletes. Very impressive. All right, let's go to the small division now. For the small division team on the girls' side, McKenna Larson from O'Connell Falls does it in a lot of different sports. Taylor Schmidt from Algoma. Kelsey Stangle, the MVP from the tournament, uh, the girls' state tournament from Kiwani. Maddie Reed from Lords Lake and James from O'Connell. Callie Walker from Berlin. Callie Walker School's all-time leading scorer from Berlin. Absolutely. Walker, James, Reed, and Larson, a thousand points. Let's talk about one of the standouts from these teams. Kimberly really bust on the scene this year, Doug. Well, Frankie, you should see where that three-pointer was shot. It was about 24 feet. She's the reason why it appeared to win 45 games in a row, at least, because she took them out in the sectional semi. She is a really good player. Very impressive. And also, we mentioned the, that duo of De Pere players, not the not the trip to state they wanted, but a very talented team. Dawson and Anderson, Kayla Dawson, Morgan Anderson, such good players, scored, passed the ball, played great defense. Uh, you know, the re they didn't get the state because of Frankie Wirtz and company, but two really great careers. All right, let's talk about the players of the year now. We have boys and girls players of the year coming your way from large division and from small division. So let's start. Large division on the boys' side goes to, appropriately, a state champion. State champion. How can't you give it to Cody Wickman? Yep. Uh, 15, 16 points per game. Had to play, you know, he shot three pointers, but he, on defense, he had to play in the post. Uh, his versatility was so good, and you saw that this year. And, you know, kind of underrated on defense. At least he wasn't in the state championship game. I thought he played really well. And he's a guy who's committed to play for UW-Milwaukee, signed to play there. And, and you, you feel like in college, Doug, he might be able to, he's going to be playing really a totally different position, maybe playing more the two or the three, where it's like you said, he played four and five in high school. Yeah, at Milwaukee, he can fire the three-pointer like nobody does around <laughs> this area. He's such a great shooter. He's going to really help Milwaukee's perimeter game without question. He'll be really impressive. All right, the small division Boys Player of the Year. We're giving it to Turner Bots from Little Shoot. Now, two great players from Little Shoot. What set Bots apart from everybody else? Turner uh, scored more than anybody on this team, rebounded better than anybody on this team, and the leader of this team, really a feisty competitor, played good D. Um, you know, and one other thing I th think he did well was get to the basket. He's such a good shooter, but he got to the hoop, and he's just he's just solid all over the place. And we mentioned Kenneth Lowe. Turner Bots also committed to play for Brian Wardle and the Green Bay Phoenix, another guy who's going to be you know, looking at a different position. But like you said, a real emotional leader for that team. And the community really embraced this guy. Yeah, and the thing I like about him, 6'6", he'll be able to shoot threes at the college level just fine. He'll be a fun guy to watch how he 
develops on the college level. All right, let's go over the girls' side now. We had several schools at the <laughs> state championships at the rest center to choose from. For the large division player of the year, we went with a first title since 2001 for her school. That's our large division player of the year. Large division player of the year, Allie LeClaire from Notre Dame. Well deserved. Uh, one of my favorite players to watch, the way she runs the fast break. Not just gets her points, but gets points for other people. And you see how she is off the dribble when she wants to get her points. She's pretty much an unstoppable force when she wants to be. And that's really what I've been impressed with her in the times I've seen her. It's that ability to get to the rim so often that really, you know, hey, Kevin Bohr says she's committed to play for Green Bay as yep. well, and she's got some time left. That's what really makes her stand out. She scores in so many different ways. That's why she's so hard to guard. All right, small division player of the year. You see it right there. Algoma's Taylor Schmidt, another state champion for the Algoma Wolves. Taylor Schmidt, just, you know, the floor general out there for Algoma. Her state semifinal was so good. She had, I think, 13 points, six assists, five rebounds. She just did everything. And she is the true point guard. She looks for her teammates first as you've seen in a lot of these highlights, but she can score if need to be. Yeah, we saw in the state championship game, they really shut her down in the yep. first half. Second half, she needed to score, and she was able to do that. All right, let's talk about the coaches now. We'll start with the boys' large division coaches, and Doug, they call it, sometimes with a cringe, Shaw Ball. That's what they call it. They didn't cringe when they were holding up the gold ball this is for true. Shaw Ball. Uh, Dave Shaw from Pulaski did it his way, and nobody did it better this year. D2 state champs. No matter what style you play, when you win a, a state title, it's a really good style. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and what we're talking about for those unfamiliar with Pulaski, they play slow, they hold the ball, they work the clock, it's frustrating to play against, but hey, the, the kids really embrace it and it worked. Yeah, they worked to a T this year. A lot of teams got frustrated. I saw that a lot of times when they played. And if you notice in these highlights, Shaw Ball, you know what it gets you? A lot of open shots. Yep. Well, you only work around for long enough like that. <laughs> Absolutely. It's bound to work. It looks a lot like, you know, Bo Ryan on the college level, yep. except they have the shot clock to deal with it. And I guess my question is, when you see Dave Sean Pulaski, when it works, do you think more teams adopt this style going forward? I know I, it's been around for a while. Yeah, it's been around, but I think teams are going to still stay with what they do best. And that a lot of the teams around here want to score a little bit more. But, you know, if Shaw can win a couple more, maybe people turn their way. But you also need the, the discipline. And the Pulaski kids had better discipline than anybody in the state in Division II. Mm -hmm. That's why they got a gold ball. Yeah, Cody Whitman, Jordan Steedy, a lot of good players. They could have shot more. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they might have enjoyed that. <laughs> All right, let's go to the boys' small school coach of the year. We're going with Mark Beerstein, new Lutheran, taking his team back to state, getting to the state title game. Doug, what made his work so special? Well, did anybody win more games than NEW in our area this year? No. I don't think so. They won their first 28, fell to Randolph in the state championship game. And they kind of did, Travis Voigt, really good player, but there wasn't a superstar on this team. Mark just did a tremendous job getting this team to play fast, which a lot of people like to see. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, the, the opposite of Shaw Absolutely. Ball, Mark they, they go up and down. They're a fun team to watch and very successful. Yeah, fun team to watch, another silver ball for them. Just Mark did a tremendous job, and they keep going back to state three of the last four years. All right, congratulations to Coach Meerstein, Coach Shaw. Let's go over to the girls' side now. Plenty of real good coaches. Like I said, at the rest center, it was just filled. You could have picked anybody for the large school, went with someone in their first year as a head coach. First year as a head coach, New London's Andrea Fleece. And what Andrea did this year was amazing. Four new starters off that team from the two-time defending state champs. Two years ago, she was playing college basketball. Wow. Never was a coach, head coach at any level. What does she do? She wins 26 straight games, and it wasn't if it wasn't for a a hero play by Eisenhower, they would have been in the state championship game. And, and it's not just about the winning. you, you got to keep your team level-headed when you're dealing with, what was it, a 68-game win streak? 68-game win streak. And this is all new for her. She's never been down this road as a head coach. And to do it with four new starters and Brenna Heisey, I thought she just did a tremendous job. They were not picked to win the Bay. Obviously, they ran away with it. Very impressive. All right, let's go to the small school uh, coaches of the year on the girls' side. And Doug, you, you went with a pair here. How can, yeah. you, how can you pick one? The war on the shore continues. They, <laughs> they split again. Lynn Geyer from Kiwani, Mark Zastro from Algoma. The team split this year. Then they went to state and each won a state title. And how do you pick between them? You don't. You give it to both of them because they both did a tremendous job. And they both really rooted each other on at state. Yeah, that, that's the cool thing is these kids and coaches root for each other. You know, Lynn Geyer had, you know, their, th their big three, Kleiman, Richard, and Stangle, who did a tremendous job, especially right there. And at, with Algoma, you had uh, Taylor Schmidt lean the way to win a state title. All right, Lynn Geyer, Mark Zastro. Excellent seasons, Doug, and excellent yep. basketball season for you as well. Congratulations. It was fun. Prep expert of the year, <laughs> if, we, if we gave that out. Maybe we'll start next year. All right, for prep expert Doug Ritchie, thank you very much. Drew, we'll send it back to you.